fresh herbs are the hallmark of a gardener with good taste. This simply stunning vertical garden of herbs really crams them in, giving you an at-hand supply of aromatic goodness to pick and enjoy as and when it's needed. How about it? Yes, please. Come on then, folks, let's get started. So as you probably guessed, we're going to make our herb planter from an old pallet. I got this one from a neighbour who's having work done. You can often find them lying about locally. People are usually only too happy to get rid of them, but do ask first, of course. You could also try hardware stores, builders merchants, or just put a call out on social media. So I've actually got a second pallet here as well, which I'm going to take a few bits of wood off to help with our pallet here. Now, if you come closer, there's what's called the pallet stamp on the pallet here, and it shows us how the wood has been treated. We want the wood to be nice and clean because we're growing herbs in it. So what we're looking for are the initials HT, which stand for heat treated. That's much safer. What we don't want are any pallets with the initials MB on, which stands for methyl bromide. That's a really nasty pesticide, and we don't want that near our edible herbs. So if we look at the pallet we're going to use, it's going to be this way up, and we're going to create three layers of planting pockets. Now we could have them one board deep, but that wouldn't give very much room for the roots to grow. So I'm going to either detach and move the boards up, so we've got a two depth of a planting pocket, or I'm gonna take some wood from our second pallet, depending on how easy these are to, to get off. But with that extra depth of roots, our herbs will be sure to thrive rather than just survive. So I've got the wood off, I expect most of you are probably much more adept at that than I was, but anyway, we got there in the end. So I couldn't salvage those boards, so I've got these boards from the other pallet. I'm just gonna remove these nails here, and then because they're a bit too short to go across, I'm just gonna hammer them on halfway like that here, and then make uh, two lots like that, and then saw them off to give a nice tidy finish. But first job is to remove these uh, nails here. I've got all the wood prepped, so now I'm just gonna line everything up, check we've got enough wood, and then basically hammer it all together. And to hammer them on, I'm just gonna use these nice and thin panel pins. So we're now ready to add our planting pockets, but before I do that, I'm just gonna give everything a nice coating of this lovely light blue paint. This is suitable for outdoor use, on wood, and crucially, it's non-toxic. Do take a bit of time over this. It's important to get it all into the nooks and crannies to get a nice, even, and attractive finish. Right, we're just about touch dry now, so the next thing is to create our planting pockets into which we'll plant our herbs. Now you could um, box this out with an extra plank at the bottom here, but it's a bit fiddly, so I prefer to use this strong kind of um, landscaping fabric. It's permeable, so excess water can drip away and drip down to the next planting pocket, in fact. And I'm just gonna cut it to size to fit the, uh, each pocket here, and then we'll staple it on. You want it to easily cover the full width, depth, and height of these planting pockets. It's better to have too much than too little. So I find the easiest way to do this is to fold it in a bit like that to create a nice straight edge, and that stops it from fraying that way. And then just start by attaching it to the front of the pallet here, like that, and that gives a nice clean line, and then we'll do our sides and the back once we've done the front here. I'm using a staple gun, it's really nice and quick, but if you don't have one, you could use kind of those U-shaped nails that you get and just hammer those in to pin the um, landscape fabric down. Now the sides and the back, so feed it in to create the pocket. There's be a certain amount of, sort of nipping and tucking to get a nice neat finish, and that's fine as long as the tops and the sides are nice and straight and clean edged. We don't want the planting pocket to sag too far down like that, so make sure that you're making it taut enough so it's kind of as flush as you can with the bottom. Right, there's the first one done. Now for the others. Mm -hmm. 
And here are the herbs we're going to plant into our pallet planter. Now I've got some just from the grocery store, some living herbs. I've got some uh, flat leaf parsley and some cilantro or coriander, looking a bit sorry for itself in the rain here. I've also got a selection from the garden center too, or nursery, this beautiful variegated sage, some gorgeous thyme, oh, gotta love that, and some chocolate mint. Look at those gorgeous stems. And my personal favorite for sheer looks is this beautiful red vein sorrel. Now, of course, you can propagate a lot of the herbs yourself by taking cuttings, sowing seeds, or dividing up any existing plants that you might have. And we have a video on that, which I will pop a link to in the description below. By the way, if you are enjoying this project, please take a moment to subscribe and dingle that notification bell so we can let you know every time we upload a video for your viewing pleasure. Right, let's get these guys planted. With these grocery store herbs, actually, if I just get one out and show you, you can see that it's actually lots of individual plants. They'll get on a lot better if you can just carefully split them apart like that and then plant them like that. They'll just have a bit more room and also fill out the planter a bit better that way. So I'm just using an all-purpose or general purpose, multi-purpose potting mix here and it's peat free as well. It started to chuck it down, so I finished planting uh, once it had dried off. But as you can see, I've got my final layers of mint and sorrel here. And at the top is where I planted my Mediterranean style herbs. These guys like a really, really free draining uh, potting mix. So I took my potting mix and just added a couple of handfuls of perlite to help with that drainage. You could just use grit, that would be fine too. Those were popped in. And then you can see here, I've got these lovely chalk panels. I simply masked out the area here and then painted on some chalk paint. And I've done a couple of layers of that to give a really solid tight finish so that when I put the uh, chalk up on here, it'll really stand out. Well, it's nice and dry here and touch dry. So I think we're good to go. So I'm just gonna peel this off and then we'll mark up our herbs and then we'll be done. The pallet can be replanted as and when it's needed or simply when you want to switch things up a bit. And the chalk marker pen I used is easy to remove just with a damp cloth and then you can rewrite the new herbs onto it. Now I'm going to move this to a sunny position so the herbs can develop their full aroma and flavor and I really can't wait to start picking it. If you love projects like this, then please do check out this playlist where you will find our recent salad tower project. A great idea for cramming in the maximum amount of salad into the smallest of spaces. I'll catch you next time.